Our overlords are meeting in Davos to plan our future, and it sounds great. The number one priority is not global climate change. Uh, it's not wars. It's not inflation. It's not food. It's nothing except misinformation and disinformation. And they're trying to get all the global leaders to come together on this and make sure that voices, quite honestly, like mine and uh, and The Blaze and uh, people like Ezra Levant from Rebel News up in Canada are silenced. Um, yesterday, um, at the conference, there was a, um, uh, a meeting on how do we shut these people up. And the uh, head of the Center for Democracy and Technology, his name is Alex Reeve Givens, he said there's something bizarre happening in America. Listen to this. Even as we're living in this heightened threat environment, a number of the social media companies have actually been scaling back their investments in trust and safety, in particular around elections. Mm. And those that are still keeping up the work are facing more political scrutiny and pressure to disband those efforts than ever before. So in the United States, for example, right now, we have congressional investigations and lawsuits against people that study mis- and disinformation about elections on social media platforms. There is currently an injunction in place stopping the Biden administration from communicating with social media platforms about interference threats on the topics of elections. That's actually going before the United States Supreme Court this year. So we're in this bizarre environment where mm. right as the threats are ticking up, the investments uh, in actually doing the, the day-to-day work of online trust and safety for our information environment is being scaled back and is under attack. And those were all things we need to recalibrate right now to try and address the threats. Yeah, sorry, I, th- I thought for sure that Alex uh, identified as a man, but apparently uh, he's now identifying as a woman. Uh, it is bizarre that we don't want government. I mean, it's just out in our Constitution, but other than that, don't worry about it. Uh, we have Ezra Levant, who is on the ground in the cold right now at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Uh, how are the hookers, Ezra? <laughs> I'm the wrong guy to ask. But my, uh, <laughs> a friend of mine did a story um, of how every single escort within 100 miles was booked up yeah. by the World Economic yeah. uh, Forum. They're good um, people. They're uh, good people. You know what? This is a place of excess. Let me give you an example. There's a small private airfield about an hour and a half away from here. And I I went there to film the private jets landing. uh, And the airport told me that 150 private jets per day land at this airstrip just for the World Economic Forum. They say that one week basically pays for the entire year. That's like a that's like a city of half a million people. That's how many flights might be there in an average day. And it's more than that. There's not enough room to park 150 jets at this small airfield, so they fly in, drop off the VVIP, then they fly out to another airfield to park, and then they come back to pick up their person. So, I I mean, and then many of them take the helicopter for that last one-hour drive, because God forbid they be on the streets with the peasants. That's the kind of luxury you see here. Um, But they're the ones telling us to reduce our carbon footprint. They're the ones telling us not to fly as much. But let me tell you what we're doing here. We are not accredited journalists. We applied and they obviously rejected us. And that's fine. So we can't get into the sessions like the one you just played a clip from. But we're on the streets in this town of Davos, which is like a ski resort high in the Alps. And it's full of, uh, I'm not going to say celebrities, but sort of political celebrities. And because they feel like they're amongst friends and it's so hard to get here, they let their guard down. So just standing on the street and reading name tags, I mean, some people you can recognize, like yesterday, I asked some questions of John Kerry about his private jet. Today, my colleague Avi asked Dr. Tedros of the World Health Organization some questions. So these people don't have big entourages, and the Swiss police have a very light touch. Penny Pritzker was here, and I asked her some questions about Harvard. And so there's no way you would get this kind of access in almost any other place. And like I say, the cops here are so gentle, they have not stopped us from scrumming anyone. Yesterday, I walked with the president of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for 10 minutes straight, peppering him with questions. He did not have any answers, but boy, I asked my questions. And and that video has been viewed a million times overnight, Glenn. It's, I, I tell you, it's a crazy place where the masters of the universe get together to make the rules for the rest of us. And there's only about 
half a dozen citizen journalists here. The rest of them are regime journalists who pay to be here as official delegates. So I, I saw, for example, Richard Quest from CNN. I think he's a great journalist 90% of the time, by the way. But we scrummed him going in there. And we said, how come you only ask softball questions of Klaus Schwab? Well, it's because CNN paid a quarter million dollars for them to get in as sort of a member. You're not going to stink up the joint if you if you got the golden invitation. So I don't know. I might pay. Here. I might pay for that. <laughs> well, I might write the I mean, check to go and have all of them come on my show. Well, I mean, they might kick you out if you do that. Yeah. By the way, I'm standing on the promenade and a huge bunch of military vehicles are passing through. I'm not sure if that's just normal Switzerland stuff or if that's because Vladimir Zelensky's in town um, and Emmanuel Macron is uh, in town and the Secretary General of the United Nations in town. These aren't just VIPs, they're VVIPs and VVVIPs, and they let you know it. So what is, what is the main thing you've taken from this? Well, look, there are some people here who are just here to sell products and services uh, because there's so many politicians and, wow, there's such a military convoy going through the downtown here. I don't even know what's happening. Maybe Zelensky's on the move. I, I, I just wanted to tell you that I'm live from the promenade in, in uh, Davos right now, and I just it's like a whole military, not a parade, but a series of big trucks. Uh, it, uh, imagine juxtaposing that with your... Uh, five-star celebrities. Anyways, the number one message, uh, as Klaus Schwab says, is information. They say their theme this year is rebuilding trust, which because they know they've shattered trust with ordinary people over the last few years, whether it's COVID or lockdowns or junk science or inflation or immigration or whatever. So they, they know they have to fix trust, but at the same time, they believe in censorship. I scrummed a right. few different officials with Meta, and uh, my colleague scrumming uh, an official from Google just a minute ago. And all our questions are about, are they trying to strangle free discussions in the year of the 2024 elections? Every one of them is aware of Trump's victory in the Iowa caucuses. And I'm talking about people around the world. This is not just Americans. This is a very oh, international... No. It is my understanding that yesterday, a lot of the discussions at Davos uh, centered around, this is a real threat to our agenda. We, this, oh, absolutely. This can't happen. If you were to take a poll of the VVIPs here at Davos, 90% uh, of them would be against Trump. Not necessarily the for Biden. They're just for anyone who won't upset the international order that they've established here. Um, and, and so, I mean, basically, these Europeans and these globalists and these elites want to have a vote um, without having a vote. Here's what I mean. For example, Klaus Schwab uh, recently said AI is so progressed, we don't really need elections anymore because AI can figure out what the people want. Uh, I've seen WEF presentations about how AI, artificial intelligence, can replace courts and judges because you just enter all the data and they'll just replicate what a good judge would do. So the room for political bias in artificial intelligence, I say those are the two emphases I can see just on the streets here. Censorship of, quote, misinformation and artificial intelligence. Well, you combine those two things and I tell you, you're in a brave new world right there. So, um, Ezra, I want to I want to talk to you about uh, one thing that came to my attention yesterday. There is a story in The Independent. Climate misinformation is mutating on YouTube, and the platform is profiting. And it is a story that mentions two people. Uh, one of them is me and The Blaze, and The Blaze, I guess, is making money from YouTube uh, because they're not canceling us and uh, putting us where we belong, which is nowhere, because we are discussing things like uh, climate crisis denial content. We also uh, were talking about the, um, uh, the last election and saying that the last, last election had many uh, uh, questions behind it. The Great Reset, an online conspiracy theory that claims global elites trying to dismantle capitalism and create a new social order, which they are. Um, and the other person was Jordan Peterson. Now, hmm. they're, they're targeting us 
through Google and Facebook. My Facebook page is down 95% in the best year I've ever had, including the years at Fox. Never had a bigger footprint than now, but Facebook is down 95%. Why? The other thing... The other part of it is... is, Yeah, go ahead. That's deliberate. They're trying to demonetize you. We scrummed Jonathan Greenblatt, the head of the ADL, and we asked them, why have you tried to kill advertising on Twitter, but never on TikTok? And they wouldn't answer that. And so that's what they're trying to do to you and Jordan Peterson. And and by the way, they're going to invent new, quote, crimes. I I saw the phrase ecocide being bandied about here. So the same way you couldn't be a skeptic or have a contrary point of view on COVID vaccines, they're going to do the same thing for climate. They, They basically telegraph that that's their plan. Well, um, one of the one of the disturbing things they they did this last year to Russell Brand. I, you don't even see him anymore. He's still doing a podcast, but he never shows up on anybody's feed. When's the last time you saw Russell Brand in your feed? Um, the well, I, I seek him out, but you're right; they're trying to kill him right. financially. Correct. And the next thing is Jordan Peterson. He lost in court yesterday uh, his appeal on having to go to some sort of a a re-education camp because he said, and this is a quote, the uh, the woman who was obese uh, on Sports Illustrated bikini was not beautiful. It was sick. And now he has to have re-education. Yeah, and that's, a, that's in some ways a lot scarier. The World Economic Forum is a bunch of people coming up with bad ideas, but they don't actually have the legal or judicial power to enforce them. The trouble is all the VVIPs here go home and go home to their legislatures or courts or businesses and implement it back home. But the WEF itself doesn't have the power to do that from Correct. here in Davos. But what you're talking about, what happened to Jordan Peterson, that was a real court. And the College of Psychologists of Ontario um, is a regulator that has the power to deny someone their profession. Now, Jordan Peterson doesn't take any patients anymore. He, ha- he hasn't in many years, but they're trying to destroy his professional reputation. Again, the college is there for doctors who are abusive or who, you know, take advantage of their clients or what, you know, it's, it's a professional organization to make sure that psychologists in Ontario are ethical. They're using that for lawfare to silence him on completely unrelated matters. And it's not just atrocious that they're meddling with his political views. It's their sentence to him, their command, their order to him is that he basically go through a political re-education. I mean, he has to go to some, I don't know, for the phrase is a coach or a, or a remedial social media class or something. Yeah, whatever the, the way, Chinese call it, it's still a uh, re-education a struggle camp. Struggle session. And, and here's the... struggle session. Yeah, struggle session. And here is, ooh, my struggle. I wonder who used that. Um, the, yeah. the other thing, though, that is disturbing is they are trying to scare doctors into silence. They have already purged all of the doctors that would say something about the COVID vaccine. Um, the nurses, all of them, anyone with a conscience that's different than the state, they're purging them. That's very dangerous, as you know. What well, Jordan Peterson is the most famous psychologist in all of Canada. He's also wealthy and in some ways very influential and maybe even powerful. So if they can do this to him, imagine what they can do to you. This is pour encourager les autres. This is to scare everybody else. Yeah, they want to shut up Jordan Peterson. I don't know if they'll succeed. That guy doesn't shut up easy. But what they're going to do is terrify a thousand other psychologists and doctors and nurses. You know, there happens to be another nurse in uh, the Canadian province of British Columbia who sponsored a sign that just said, I heart J.K. Rowling. Like, that's all she did. And they took her before the professional association for the same sort of thing. And and so how many nurses, how many doctors, how many people of any profession are being terrorized into silence? And it's all part of the same cultural Marxism or wokeism. Hey, you know, yesterday I scrummed the president of State Street. Do you know what that is? It's yes. just like BlackRock. It's a huge asset manager and i and i asked him and that's that's what it's like here in davos you never know who you're going to bump into and i said to him aren't you putting your own politics ahead of your fiduciary duties to uh to your shareholders like you're you're i said you're promoting esg environmental and social governance basically cultural marxism i said 
How can you do that and, and claim to be uh, his response to the shareholders? Well, he said, we're doing both. He said, we're not going to stop with ESG, but it's shareholder value. Right. And then I pressed on okay. a little bit and, Quickly. and, and he, and he, and he wouldn't talk much more. Yeah. But uh, that's what Davos is like at the World Economic Forum. Thank he, you so much. Ezra Levant ideas. from, uh, from uh, Rebel News up in Switzerland right now with the elites.